Hello, everybody, and welcome to HardAssetsInvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host. Today, we'll be looking at the global macro picture with my guest, Jim Awad, chairman of Plimsoll Mark Capital. Jim, thanks very much for coming on the show. Always oh, great yeah. to have you. Always my pleasure. So, uh, we're looking at a lot of, I, I mean, now, a lot of political turmoil and how that's going to play into sort of the bigger picture, a little bit, you know, medium to longer term chaotic i have to use the word chaotic here in the united states certainly in the united uh, states with the dysfunction that we see going on how yeah. do you think investors uh, are going or will react you know over a longer time frame to what they might perceive as just total dysfunction right well it is dysfunction there there is no center anymore the the um, republican party is fractured the democratic party is moving uh, away from the center a little bit further to the left so there's no compromise there are no big big boys or big women in town to say let's get together and make a deal so uh, what that does is is on the margin it makes business people less optimistic on the margin it makes investors uh, less optimistic not in a major kind of way because people will still find ways to make money business people and, and, and investors but on the margin it makes it less good than it could have been and I think that ultimately it will create the opportunity for an emergence of of somebody like a Ronald Reagan who will who will will shake us up and and reinvigorate us but until then you have to view it as a moderate headwind that we're just stuck with because of the structure of both of uh, both parties and and the lack of any uh, uh, elder statesman centrist statesman to bring the various parties together you know you raise a very interesting point because th through the prism of large businesses corporations many of which you know traded publicly uh, times are great, right? I mean, you see corporate profits at record levels. But uh, in, the, in the mainstream sense or the impact to societies in general, you know, the, the, the right. turmoil that that inflicts, you know, are we looking at, um, you know, this, this growing sort of dichotomy between, hey, corporate America is doing fine, but we have to lurch from crisis to crisis, you know, socially with uh, protests and this sort of thing. Well, in, in the big picture, corporations are doing well because it's been a capital-led recovery, uh, not a labor-led recovery. And, you know, part of that is secular, that uh, the economy is simply not growing at a fast enough rate to create opportunity for, for right. everybody. Right. And therefore, the older people aren't retiring, and that makes it tougher for the younger people. So there's high unemployment uh, for younger people. And also, that, that creates a situation where the rich get richer and the middle class struggles and the poor uh, only get by because of the... Uh, the government safety net. So that is a separate issue that the, the capital sector is doing uh, fabulously well. But do, uh, but, do, but do they have a disproportionate impact on policy? I mean, they're the moneyed interests, right? And I mean, despite people call Obama a socialist, yet we see this acceleration of the wealth flow up to the top. I mean, it, it's kind of odd to have him labeled like that. Yeah. I'm not taking sides here. I'm just saying, is, is won't that trend continue? Continue? Well, they, they have the disproportionate uh, amount of the money, the capital class. But I wouldn't say, and they, they are able to spend it in special interest advertising, etc. But uh, th there is a school of thought that says the, 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 the disenfranchised are growing at such a rate, and they are angry enough that they are motivated. And, and there's political opportunity there. There's political opportunity. Right. And part of that is the Democratic Party moving to the left to, to satisfy that, that need. And then you have the Republican Party moving to the right to to uh, cater to the anger of the, of yeah. the white upper white class the tea that, party that, yeah that no longer dominates the right. uh, the economy or the uh, or the politics of, of the country so there is a broader issue here of of uh, the rich getting richer and the the, the, the middle class struggling and the, and and the poor struggling that that will be addressed through thank God we have a peaceful uh, society and a democratic process and we'll work our way through all of those issues but the point for an investor right is what however the economy economy is doing, it would do better if you had a functional Washington sure. that could solve some of the growth. growth. Right. Well, yeah, everyone would be more right. inclusive. Right. So uh, I'm glad you kind of segued into the investment angle. You know, you, you've been a long time investor, market observer. Uh, given the conditions that we see now, the sort of political dysfunction, austerity kind of everywhere, 
Um, what do you do as an investor, and how do you protect yourself against you know the potential uh, pitfalls? Out right. There? Well, it is a low return environment. You're getting nothing on on cash and very little uh, on bonds. So those are two areas that you should avoid. You are having reasonable growth in the world, not high growth, not growth enough. But it's the kind U.S. Of a is Goldilocks. Yeah, well, the U.S. Point. is growing at sort of two percent for the moment. Europe appears to have bottomed. Uh, uh, the, the deceleration in China appears. To, to be over. Uh, India, we'll see. Uh, Brazil, the deceleration for the moment seems to be over. So you have to say that the worldwide economies will grow somewhat. And the best way to capitalize on that is to own multinational uh, equities, particularly those domiciled in the U.S. with, with, uh, with bulletproof balance sheets, dividends, and, and global footprint. Uh, having said that, uh, a part of the U.S. markets, uh, the speculative parts, have done better than they really should uh, do. And I would reduce exposure to those because what's happening is because of what the Fed's doing, you're getting tremendous speculation in the credit markets. Right. And I fear that when interest rates normalize, as they they ultimately will have to, that people who shouldn't have gotten debt uh, have gotten it. We're going to find out they can't pay the higher interest rate. And I'm fearful of an accident in the credit markets. So what I would say is uh, do own global conservative equities, but uh, don't don't own low quality stocks, don't own low quality bonds because uh, you could have an accident in the credit markets that that will su surprise us one day. So I'm wondering because you're talking about the, the ultimate, you know, normalizing of interest rates. Um, how, how does that bode for the material sector, which has seen a, a big pullback? You know, if you're talking about commodities, raw materials, like I tend to be contrarian. I look at this and say, you know, if you are a long-term investor. That's a great place to put some money to work right now. Do you agree with that? If or? you're very long term, very I don't long. think growth in the foreseeable future will be uh, uh, enough to sustain those prices because the, the big importing countries, which are the emerging market and the frontier markets, uh, uh, they don't seem to, to, to be experiencing the growth right now to sustain higher prices. But you do know in the long run the, the middle classes in those countries are growing. They're going to demand more uh, goods and services and, and and they're going to have more wealth, and that will drive higher prices. So I would say if you have a five- to ten-year outlook, you're right. If you have a one- to two-year outlook, I'm not sure you're right. Okay, so summing it up, I think you just summed up the material sector pretty well. Um, you know, modest growth, uh, looking forward. You want to be in the multinational companies because you're still talking about a global uh, you know, growth, growth of some story. sort, yeah, and and you want to reduce your risk. Aside from that, that uh, the markets have done too well, the credit markets have done too well, junk bonds have done too well, low quality stocks have done too well, levered stocks have done too well, and I would protect myself by by selling those and increasing my exposure to multinationals. Right. You're, you're very optimistic on working out all this political stuff, which well, I like. We'll, yeah. we'll get through. We we got through Richard Nixon. We got through Jimmy Carter. We'll get through this. All right, Jim Awad, always a pleasure to have. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman saying see you next time. Bye-bye.